bid you all a good morning, and in fact, it's a, it's a golden morning. Even if it were rainy and wind whipped, as it has been in the past, it would still be a glorious day here at the Niles Public Library, as the banners proclaim, and we celebrate the presence of our local heroes at this ninth, ninth Veterans History Project breakfast. The banners bear the front cover of all the interviews of the veterans who have participated in the national project here at the Niles Library. It is wonderful and inspiring to see them and other veterans from our community here this morning. All heroes. Hello, I'm Pearl, and I serve in Occupation Forces in Europe. Uh, Dick Banner, Marines. Uh, I volunteered for the Raiders, and then they rewarded me with 28 months in the Pacific as a vacation. <laughs> I visited seven islands, including Guadalcanal, Guam, and Okinawa, where the uh, people there uh, resisted us. <laughs> but anyway, it was a it was a great a great experience. Hi, I'm Tom Vanna. This man here on my left is my father. I, I was a uh, <laughs> medic in Korea in 1969-1970 on the DMZ with the 2nd Infantry Division. I'm Jack Weber, Company D, 4th Infantry. Uh, I, really, uh, I really wanted to become a parachutist. I almost got my chance because at one time I had to jump out a window and wound up in a big pile of horse manure. <laughs> My name is Matthew Waitasek. I served in the U.S. Army with the 82nd Airborne Division from 1942 to 1945. I got six battle stars and I participated in some of the big battles in, uh, in Europe from Casablanca on French North Africa to Berlin, Germany. There was North Africa, Sicily, Italy, D-Day, Normandy, Battle of the Balls, uh, and Germany, and that's about it. So and I'll, I'll be, in a couple of months, I'll be 94 years old. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Betty, along with my class of Pardon me, 32 other physical therapists. We all entered the service in 43. Uh, I spent only one my time on one island, surrounded by six foot barbed wire fence to protect us from the Japanese. The Japanese were not a bit interested in us. They wanted the kitchen, the food. I share with Matt, one month I'll be 94. Good morning, my name is Irv Abramson. In 1943, that was 73 years ago. I was 17 years old and I had just started college. Uh, the United States was fighting two wars in two different hemispheres. And uh, my uncle, you know him, Sam, my uncle Sam <laughs> came to uh, all the colleges and told the students if they would uh, enlist in one of the military services uh, that my uncle would pay for our education uh, at college. Well, that sounded like a pretty good deal. So I ran to my nearest uh, enlistment office and 20 minutes later I came out, called my mother and said, Mom, I got the job. <laughs> uh, I subsequently served uh, as a marksman sharpshooter with the 100th uh, uh, Division, and uh, Army Division, and uh, we went through France and Germany. Uh, finally wound up at the Battle of the Bulge, where I uh, was uh, seriously wounded by a German artillery shell, spent the next year of my life in hospitals across France and the U.S getting put back together again, which uh, turned out okay. I'm very happy to be here to talk about it, and uh, my uh, wife and I uh, just celebrated our uh, 90th birthdays and our 68th wedding anniversary. Uh, and, and, 
have the uh, cherry on the Sunday was that Uncle Sam did pay for my education. <laughs> okay, um, we have four people up here who really need to be in roll call next. I was uh, with the 13th Armored Division. There were three divisions under Patton, and we were one of those three, pretty active. Uh, Patton seemed to it that we kept pushing up. Uh, we went through France. All, all of Germany and ended up at the Hitler's home uh, at the end of the war. Uh, so we made a complete trip. And that was about it. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Celine Timchuk. I'm representing my husband, Walter, who passed away last year at the age of 93. Uh, Walter uh, served in the U.S. Army, Private First Class, and he was at Normandy and six months in combat. Thank you. I'm Martha Ship. I was with the United States Cadet Nurse Corps for three years, and I said, served in the homeland units. I spent some time at um, Heinz Hospital. Thank you. Bill Shipp. I was with the 75th Infantry Division. They always put me in the first row and that was a better that was the best place when I because I was carrying a machine gun and nobody wanted to be ahead of me <laughs> so uh, it, it was nice to uh, have you here uh, with my mother with my wife If it wasn't for our serving at Heinz Hospital, we never would have met. Hi, my name is Judith. I'm representing my father, Norman Berkman. Um, he didn't have to go into the Army. He was asked to because he spoke Russian. They decided they could turn his Yiddish into German. He was a professional musician, so he decided, okay, I will go, I will serve my country. And he went, and he was a spy. Um, there are papers, I don't know how he got out of the army with them, but he did, showing that uh, his German identity, which still kind of gives me the creeps, uh, after the war was over, he remained in the reserves, at which time they turned him into an interrogator. Now, he didn't tell me much about who he interrogated or about what, and he didn't say much about what he did as a spy, but whatever he did, I'm very proud of him. Bernice Tarchepo, I served in the Navy. I was a starkeeper first class. I didn't carry a gun. I used a typewriter. <laughs> and I watched the money. Thank you. I'm Charles Vip from the United States Marine Corps. I, I was a, a head scout. I was behind the enemy lines three times. A silent mission. I can't have a rifle. I can't shoot. It would disclose my location. Three times I thought I would never come alive. I was behind the lines there, and I get a straggler, a gap. I can't leave the man here. He holler a marine, so I got. I can't shoot him, so I got my knife. I got a knife. I got to kill him. Then I went another mission. I killed him, 
And then another vision. I kill him. I don't want to kill him no more. I want to forget. I want to forget. Simplify. small little pipe would come that went into a building and it really shook us up with the kids as well as adults and I found out that nobody in my family would ever go on an airplane after that. But naturally, what did I do when I went in the Army? Well, I was um, in pilot training for about a year. Uh, it was near the end of the war in 1944 when I, we got through with it. And um, I went into the Army and I can't swim. And Uncle Sam put me in an amphibious outfit. <laughs> That's right. Anyways, I, I was overseas in Europe for 17 months during the war. Uh, we finally got to the Rhine River, and here was our first chance to do some amphibious work. And they said, we don't want you fellas. We've still got the Navy from, uh, from D-Day, and they're more experienced, so you'll just have to step aside. <laughs> that was the Army. It was a great, great experience, great memories. The girls were a great memory. The girls of World War II. And um, all in all, um, it's a marvelous experience. Uh, and uh, thank you for being here. Good morning. My name is Ken Radnitzer. I was uh, in the 1st Marine Division in invasion of uh, Okinawa. I spent 83 days on Okinawa, and after that, we uh, served there. We went to um, Peking and helped uh, Chiang Kai-shek uh, fight the communists. After that, when I went home, I wanted to go to school. After I got through with the Marine Corps, I wanted to go to school, so I went to college, and I joined the ROTC. The, military and uh, I was commissioned a, a lieutenant in 1950 so the army thought I was qualified to serve in Korea so I was called up in Korea I spent uh, eight months in the 7th infantry division and uh, after I did come home I served in the reserve for 26 years I'm sitting here with all these guys that are heroes. I volunteered for the draft in 52. I didn't get out of the country. I'm from northern Michigan. I went down to Fort Bliss, Texas to learn anti-aircraft. And I guess Chicago thought that they were going to come over because of the Korean War and bomb Chicago. So I was at headquarters battery, 49 AAA gun battalion, and I had four gun sites. Uh, uh, a Able battery was on Montrose Beach. Baker Battery was right here on Niles where the cemetery is. Charlie Battery was in Schiller Park. Doug Battery was in Skokie. And Headquarters Battery was up at Fort Sheridan. And on weekends, we used to go to Camp Haven, Wisconsin, right off the shores of Sheboygan. And I would have a plane pulling a sleeve over Lake Michigan. And then we would, radar would pick it up at 2,000 feet, so we would set the 90 millimeter shell at 2,000 feet and blast off over Lake Michigan. And all that flack, I mean that for three or four years, all that flack is laying on the bottom of Lake Michigan. We could never do that today. But no, I never left the country. I was here protecting Chicago. So I'm no hero. Thank you very much. My life in the military was a little complex. I joined the Navy and uh, served as a midshipman. The war ended, and uh, I went into the Naval Reserve. Uh, President Truman and General Hershey, Hershey decided that they needed the people, and they sent a letter to the draft board, which 
caused me to be drafted by the Army for the Korean War. I served a total of 13 years in the Army and Army Reserve, have four discharges, honorable, and I owe it all to the fact that uh, when I was brought into the Army and served in the 32nd MRU, that I was helping people get to Japan to fight the Korean War. I'm Joe Mattis. Uh, I served with the 32nd Signal Battalion in Germany in Russo Forces. And uh, that's it. <laughs> My name is Harry Weber. I served in Korea. I was the 13th Combat Engineers. And they thank you. special. Every person in this country served in one way or another on the home front with rationing and all other inconveniences, producing, working in the uh, factories to produce arms for the country. And I think I've been more than paid. The Army paid for my master's and doctor's degree in education. So I should be thanking <coughs> others rather than myself. Thank you. My name, my name is Mark Weiner. I enlisted in uh, uh, toward the uh, middle 45 and I got in very late. I uh, went as an overseas replacement and uh, served uh, a year in the Philippines. And uh, as Mort, my friend, said, uh, I got my education due to the uh, Air Corps at that time. Thank you. Good morning. I'm John O'Malley. I never left the country as an instructor in the 3rd Armored Cavalry. But it was fun. Hi. My name is Mike McKelty. I was in the 3rd Marine Division. I served in Vietnam uh, in 1966 to 67 and uh, blew up ammunition and mines, built bridges and blew up bridges. Thank you. Uh, my name is Milton Langer and I would like to refer back to Bob Besser as the publisher of the Bugle. My oldest granddaughter was highlighted on the front page of this newspaper in 1995 because she was supposed to be in the building that was blown up in Oklahoma City. Fortunately, that's, the, that's the, the third item in my life that I feel was I was very fortunate. She was not in the building as a child in the daycare center in, that t uh, in the Murtaugh building, federal building in Oklahoma City. My, my story is I was in during the, during the Korean War and of course I was sent to France and I, I became the radio officer of the advanced section in France. Of course, the person that should have had the job that, that was an electrical engineer, but he played football. So I got the job, at, and I didn't ever learn that how to take code. The French didn't shoot at us very much. And we were, uh, and uh, uh, it was in Verdun, France. And many of you may remember it from the First World War. I wasn't there then. But during the First World War, that was the place where they killed an awful lot of people, the Germans and the French. I stayed in the military, in the reserves, and went from the Signal Corps to the Corps of Engineers. And uh, I retired after, I don't know, some, maybe 30 years or something like that. Uh, my name is John Begaiski. I served in Korea with the 24th Infantry Division, 21st Regimental Police, uh, 56 to 57. Uh, presently, I'm Senior Vice Commander of Park Ridge Post, 
3579, who are still looking for a lot of members. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Russell Zapel. I was in the Navy Air Corps World War II. We, we flew uh, anti-submarine warfare, both in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and we did convoy escort and air-sea rescue service. Jerry Levin, I was 18 and sent to the Pacific and fought in Guam and Leyte and the Okinawa. And after the war, I went to a medical school on the GI Bill. Uh, my name is Fred Ziegler. I served with the 6th Tank Battalion, assigned to the 24th Infantry Division in Korea in 1951. My name is Charles Jacobs. Uh, I s served as a medic on the USS Sims in the Pacific from 1943 to 1946. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Richard Highland. I uh, joined the Marines when I was 17. Uh, my mother signed for me out of high school. Uh, the first year I was in the Marines, I uh, went to boot camp at PI, and then uh, I went into heavy equipment and ducks and amphibs and then at school company up in the Camp of June, and I finished that, and they went to uh, make a diesel mechanic out of me, and I was I put in for overseas when I joined because it was peacetime then. Cold War. And uh, my CEO turned me down. He says, Do you go to school in Guam, Mr. He says, Well, I want to go over to Shanghai. I want to go to China. So I went over to uh, MS duty for 30 days after boot camp at school company. Then I came back and went back to the CEO. He said, You still want to go overseas? He says, Yeah. He says, Go back to MS duty for another 30 days. So I did another, I did my three years that I signed for all in less than a year, I went back on mess duty. Happened again a third time and uh, sent me back on mess duty again. By that time I was chief messman. So I had quite a few hundred guys feeding them every morning and did all right. We had a new CO and he looked at my record later and he says, you did pretty well. He says, they pray, you know, you made chief messman. But uh, the guy they had there, they had the CIA watch him. I guess he had a a short uh, deal where he would, uh, he, he was like a little bit of a thief, so they locked him up, put him in jail, you know. And I, I ended up cheap messing. So uh, the new CEO says, I got a duty for you, but you got to volunteer. I says, oh, I, I'm kind of scared of that, but uh, I'll volunteer. So he says, they closed China up, so you can't go there. So I ended up with, uh, reported to New York, and uh, we went on a private uh, boat ship and uh, they told us we were 250 miles out we had a detachment of Marines going over there said, you guys are going to uh, Palestine the Middle East they're, they're signing uh, between the Arabs and Jews they're signing a peace which they never did they said well, we're still going on over there and uh, I went over there and I had a diplomatic passport so it, uh, I was there a year and a half came back went to Quantico Virginia Trained second lieutenants at Quantico, in Korea busted, so he uh, kept me for another year, and uh, we got out. And when I'm uh, now I'm volunteering down at Heinz Hospital, I'm a representative for Ambits, and uh, I uh, also was going. I would have been over there over 25 years, and. Uh, I volunteered at the USO here for over 20 years, but my wife got sick, so I'm sort of helping her along now. And uh, that's about it, so thanks a lot. One more of our uh, Veteran Sister Project uh, participants sitting down to my right here, uh, uh, Mr. Dominic, so we're going to ask Al to say a few words. My name is Al Dominic. Uh, 
I did service in the Pacific for about a year and a half, and I returned to the States and uh, went into training and then spent another year and a half in Europe. Um, <clears throat> in, in Europe, when the Germans broke through the, <clears throat> the, the uh, uh, the Allied lines, <clears throat> it was very treacherous to, uh, they constantly changed code words, so you didn't know what was the right code word, so you wouldn't get shot or, or whatever if they stopped you. But like I said, it was an interesting experience and uh, <clears throat> it, did, it did me a lot of good. I was able to get better educated by being in the war <clears throat> than I ever dreamed. <clears throat> and that's it. Um, you'll notice the front pages on the banners around the room, and these are all the uh, gentlemen and ladies that have participated in the Veterans History Project uh, here at the Niles, here at the Niles Library. Um, but um, some of them, unfortunately, are not with us uh, today. So, but I would, uh, we do feel like they're, they're present, so I'd like to read their names. Uh, Albert Aronson, uh, Robert Barsky, Walter Bussey, Norman Berkman, Irvin Blazinski, Robert Crandall, John DiCecco, Anthony Dina, Ralph Friedman, August Habinghurst, Irby Hansen, Edward Hawker, Thomas Hill, Henry Horseman, Mike Kosira, Don Lewan, Edward Murnan, Matthew Potacek, Hyman Ray, Chester Regala, Sal Schatz, Orville Skippy, and we lost our uh, centenarian, uh, Erwin Williger, this year. So I would ask that perhaps we could uh, take a moment's silence in their memory and also the memory of all those uh, veterans that we have in our own minds and lives that make it possible for, uh, for us to be here and to just all the power of good. Thank you. And then if we could have uh, one more uh, general round of applause for the wonderful ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that roll call is not easy to do. <laughs> and they've maintained their file and standing and stature and demeanor and comportment and shared so much with us. Thank you very much for a special experience.